Courts are an important part of our legal system, but they can also be very intimidating. We discuss how New Jersey courts are working to improve access and fairness for everyone. It's all here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, a member of Geisinger. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas. Thank you for connecting with Latino Motion. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. My name is Adrian Lopez and I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. New Jersey courts are one of the three independent branches of government in New Jersey that play an important part in protecting our rights and liberties. Joining me is Sandra Rodriguez with the Atlantic Cape May Courthouse to tell us more about their diversity and inclusion efforts. Sandra, welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about diversity and inclusion in the court system. Why is that so important for the court system? Well, it's twofold. Um, my uh, other job is EEOAA officer. And from a workforce perspective, it is very important that we have um, our staff uh, look like our court user. So we've worked very hard over the years um, in, in trying to make our workforce as people retire um, as diverse as we can. And that's important, and certainly um, it wasn't that way before. Uh, mm, I, we no. didn't have the, uh, the diversity uh, and, and uh, the importance of having the staff re reflect the community. That, that's very critical. And you also engage in community outreach as well. Yes. Tell me about that. We have um, uh, a committee, uh, and we've broken the committee up into two segments. Uh, access to the court, community outreach and public education, and juvenile justice improvement. Um, what we've done, we've been able to recruit volunteers, individuals um, from our community that are either educators, retired educators, um, pastors, um, just uh, individual in the individuals in the community that um, are just concerned citizens, um, and we've asked them to be a part of these work groups. Those individuals um, have taken a grassroots approach in trying to give us information in terms of how they see uh, us performing. So this is almost like... Uh uh, being able to uh, find out uh, what the customer satisfaction, what's going to satisfy the users of the court system. Yes. And certainly uh, it hasn't always been the most friendly place to go to and perhaps very intimidating, uh, but you're looking to change that. Tell me about some of the efforts in terms of the access. Correct. Um, you may have read or, or heard in the community 
um, that we have had several safe surrender events. Mm -hmm. uh, we have events monthly that are held at the Atlantic City uh, bus terminal where individuals can go in um, without fear of arrest, have their records reviewed, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, have had expungement sessions uh, where people can, can come in and ask questions about that as well. And we will get into uh, the resource center and some of the, uh, mm -hmm. the services there available to help you do that. Yes. Uh, in terms of uh, access, uh, you know, uh, I, I picture what I had to go through when I went to motor vehicle, a lot of chaos, and uh, I just went this week, and it's a total different system, mm -hmm. uh, very smooth, in and out. Uh, uh, and uh, are you hoping to make those kind of transformal changes in the court system? Yes, we are. One of the things that we've uh, implemented, it's the language access plan. And in doing so, the, the, the plan uh, has required us to hire more bilingual staff at the clerk level uh, so that those individuals are, are actually at the service windows to, to help individuals um, communicate in, in terms of what their needs are. What are some of the biggest challenges people have when they come into the court system or come into the courthouse, I should say? Just not understanding. They don't understand where to go, what, what to do with the paperwork that's been presented to them. Um, and that's what the Court Resource Center has been set up to, to help those court users. So the Court Resource Center is right in the facility? Yes, in Atlantic City, and we have one in Cape May County as well. You also have a special effort undergoing with the uh, Cape May to make sure that access is also available there. Yes, and, and we have um, a, a Court User Resource Center there as well, and it is staffed. What are you doing in the juvenile justice front? Well, we work with different organizations, um, and uh, we bring uh, speakers in uh, to, to try to educate. Um, actually, um, one is coming in the near future to talk about uh, the opioid epidemic, vaping, what to look, look for. The educators are, are very interested uh, in hearing those types of presentations. Parents are very interested. Uh, and, and hearing about the signs and, and uh, you know, what, what to look for in their, in their children. And those are some of the presentations that you're taking out into the community. Yes, now, yes. Well, we ask those agencies, those mm -hmm. resources, uh, to assist us in doing that. Oh, it sounds like a, a lot of great work and certainly uh, making it a lot easier for access into the court system is always a great thing. Yes. We're going to continue this discussion. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. Join us online at www.latinomotion.tv. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We encourage your comments and contributions for show topics. Welcome back to Latino Motion. The court system could be intimidating for many of us, but there are some valuable resources that can help us. Joining me is Karen Michaels, and also returning is Sandra Rodriguez to tell us more about those resources. Ladies, welcome back to Latino Motion. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We were talking about the, uh, it's specifically the Atlantic Cape May courthouse, uh, you call it Vintinich? Visnich. Visnich. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, obviously Judge Mendez happens to be in charge of that uh, uh, courthouse and uh, the first Latino uh, to hold that position, so very pr proud of that. Uh, let's talk about the resources. We, we know that uh, folks are intimidated when they come into the courthouse. There's uh, many things happening there. Um, tell me about the resource centers that you have. Uh, the Resource Center is a quiet place where people can conduct court business. We have law books available if they want to do any type of legal research. We also have a computer program that has, um, it's called LexisNexis, and it's a, a legal research program that's done on the computer. 
Um, we have court staff available there to assist court users with filling out paperwork. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people come in not knowing what the next process is. Um, if they file a complaint, what comes next? So we assist them with the court process. So this is not, you're not providing legal advice? Oh, uh, we're not permitted to give legal advice at all. Um, as a judicial, the judiciary is actually a neutral place and it's, it's there to actually resolve complaints. So definitely have to stay neutral. Now, uh, Sandra, I know for the Latino community, African American community uh, that utilizes the court system, yes. um, it could be a very intimidating place uh, just based on, on, on history. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, how are we making this a little more friendly as far as uh, diversity and inclusion? Okay. Well, first of all, as, as I mentioned earlier with the language access plan, uh, we also have um, bilingual staff that work in the resource center okay. uh, to, to help uh, court users. Um, and so far, it, it's working out marvelously. Uh, the young lady's name, we believe, has gotten out in the public, and people come faithfully every day looking, and, and will wait for her to be able to assist them. So this is not legal advice, but it's basically spelling out the roadmap, if you will, yes. and how to utilize the services of the courthouse. Um, tell me about, the, you also host seminars uh, as well. Tell me about those. In the past, we've held uh, multiple seminars. We've held one on expungements, one on consumer debt, another one on juvenile expungements. We're now planning on possibly having one about divorce and how to fill out the proper paperwork to do that. And then looking maybe even into the future to expand the topics to include landlord tenant court. Uh, let's talk about the expungement because that's a big uh, uh, piece, a uh, big deal for uh, minority community as well. Uh, what's the process and, and can you do this on your own? Uh, is there resources available to help you with that? You can do it on your own, but it's a very complicated process. Mm -hmm. um, what we've been doing is going out into the community and having uh, expungement seminars. Um, people have to pre-qualify prior to coming to the event. It just makes the process a little bit easier. So they would give us a call, we take down their information, we look up their court record, and then uh, we would print it out, refer it to the expungement team, they would review it and see if they qualify for an expungement. Can, can you define what expungement really means? Yeah, expungement is when your arrest or conviction or indictment is sealed from the public. So if someone were to go out to get a job, um, and normally an employer would look into their, their history of in, in the criminal courts and they wouldn't be able to find anything because it's been expunged. When uh, individuals have warrants out, uh, obviously, to try to avoid the, the court system, but there's resources available as well uh, for helping them uh, uh, process those warrants and, and maybe get a, a, a hearing date set. Well, in the community safe surrenders that Sandy had mentioned that are held throughout the year, there is also a bus station event in, at the Atlantic City bus terminal once, once a week, I'm sorry, once a month. And what they do is the court um, employees go down there with their computers. If somebody has an outstanding warrant, they would approach us and say, you know, I have an outstanding warrant. We would look it up to see what municipality it was for. We would call that municipality to see if we can get that, that warrant um, eliminated and get them a new court date. So, ah, so that's, that's a, a great advantage, mm -hmm. particularly for some who've been dodging uh, the system for a long time and uh, maybe have uh, uh, turned down jobs because of it or, and really uh, changed their lifestyle. Uh, but this is a, a, a way to get a fresh start. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the, um, uh, the people you serve. So um, uh, obviously it's Atlantic at Cape May. You have this resource available in both uh, yes. counties? Mm -hmm. How about the rest of the state? Do they also have those resources? Um, the, and many of them do have the, a resource center. Some of them aren't as intricate or involved as we are, but I believe that's in the plan to actually extend the resource centers throughout the state. Now, how do people know about it? I mean, do they have to go to the court to find um, out about the resources? Is there a web page? Is there a phone number they could call? We're located, at, in, like I said, in Atlantic and Cape May counties. Um, we do have a telephone number available if somebody is not able to come to the resource center. Um, it's 609-402-0100, extension 47220. They can get a bilingual Spanish-speaking 
person as well as an English speaking person as well. Thank you so much. It's a lot, a lot of information, certainly a lot of more resources uh, available than I had imagined. But we want to continue this discussion. We have a lot more to talk about. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Thank you for connecting with Latino Motion. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. My name is Adrian Lopez and I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue to discuss important information about our court system with both Sandra Rodriguez and Karen Michaels. Ladies, welcome back to Latino Motion. Thank, Thank you. you. So I know, Karen, we were talking about the Resource Center, and I have a follow-up, particularly around the safe surrender. So uh, this is when you have a warrant, we discuss how you were able to uh, make arrangements, uh, but you're basically doing a safe surrender. So that means you're not getting arrested. Uh, and you're actually making arrangements to have a court appearance and get that warrant removed. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. Like I said, with the safe surrenders, they're they're um, happen about maybe maybe three times a year, okay. but with the bus station, it happens every month. And when it first started out, people were a little bit leery about getting arrested. So you know, a couple people would come tell their friends, etc. And it has grown to I would say close to an average of 40 people a month coming in to get warrants recalled. It's been a huge success, and people in the community feel safe that they won't get arrested. They trust us. Right. And you know, the other option, uh, obviously, is that you do get arrested uh, mm -hmm. because you have an outstanding warrant, but mm -hmm. this is an option mm -hmm. uh, to really clear the deck, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and they can and get their warrant recalled and get a new court date to resolve their issue. Exactly. Let's talk about the impact that the Resource Center is having in the community. Mm -hmm. The Resource Center had opened in April of 2018, and from April to December, we serviced probably around 3,600 court users. So far this year, we're projected to almost double that and, and um, help at least maybe possibly 6,000 people which the research center has grown. I actually had a gentleman come in today. He needed assistance filling out his paperwork. And he looked at me and says, how long have you guys been here? And I said, almost two years. He says, oh, I wish I knew you were here. I would have, I would have filed this paperwork earlier. Yeah, it's uh, certainly like going to motor vehicles for the first time in several years. You, you, you do notice the difference. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk about one important uh, aspect of the diversity and inclusion uh, Sandra, that you were talking about, and that is the language. You mentioned that you do have bilingual staff there, yes. but um, it's not uh, that's Spanish. But if yes. someone is, has another language, you're also able to provide translation for those individuals? Yes, we can. Um, in interpreter services, uh, they are able, if, if someone speaks a, another language, they are able to bring freelance interpreters in to assist those uh, court users. And I'm, I know that uh, Judge Mendez would want us to talk about certified interpreters, which is a, a specialty in itself. Uh, can you tell us more about that career opportunity? Yes, um, it's, it's a fab fabulous career opportunity um, that uh, a lot of people don't know exists. Uh, in the southern New Jersey region, um, uh, we do not have an abundance of applicants that are certified to be court interpreters. Uh, we realize that our interpreters are, are probably going to be retiring in the next few years. And as a, a community and as a court system, we're, we're very concerned about that. So um, our message is to please visit our website, NewJerseyCourts.gov. Uh, look for language services, click that button, and then you'll be able to see what the role of the, the certified court interpreter is. It is a very involved process to become certified. Um, but if you are bilingual, if you are fluent in, in Spanish, um, it, it could be a wonderful career opportunity. The, the starting salary is around uh, 
a little over $63,000. So if our director could follow your directions on how to get it, we'll put it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, uh, that's important. Uh, we'll, we'll put up the, the website as, as well. So Thank if you. anyone's interested, they could certainly apply. Uh, you have another program that I want to talk about, and that's uh, One Judge, One School. Sounds very intriguing. Tell me about that program. The One Judge, One School program started approximately seven years ago. And in its abduction, there was only 16 schools that participated. And what it is is the judges, it's a judge's outreach, and they go out to the schools and visit with the students, and also the, ju the students come and visit the judges in the, court, the courtroom. And um, it's grown, I believe we have about 70 schools this year yes. that the judges are going to be participating in. Mm -hmm. So the, the schools reached out or you reach out to the schools? A little bit of both. In okay. fact, um, our program increased by 17 schools this past year is because of something that Sandy's going to mention. Yes. Um, uh, Judge Grant at the Administrative Office of the Courts, uh, he has a subcommittee, the Asian and Hispanic Subcommittee Group. Uh, he charged our subcommittee, I happen to be a member of it, um, to look at the demographics in each of the counties and determine with the Department of Education numbers um, which schools had large concentrations of Asian and Hispanic students. Uh, and looking at Atlantic and Cape May, uh, even though we are in, as Karen said, a, a lot of local schools, it added 17 schools to our existing list. Um, some of the vicinages around the state are taking on those schools a little at a time. Judge Mendez and Judge Sanson told us, no, we're going to visit them all now. But that certainly is a lot of engagement that you're doing out in the community. Great work. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us at home once again here on Latino Motion. Choose to get your feet wet. To learn more about protecting our environment. Choose to read minds. To understand the human brain. Choose to get your hands dirty. To create a masterpiece. Stockton University offers 50 high quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare, a member of Geisinger. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world. And South Jersey Gas.